Hello, my name is Marcelo Martinezzi. I'm from Paraguay and I directed the film The Heresies. ¿El lustre es original? Che. Estas copas son de cristal. ¿Por qué será que las venden? Yo no las vendería. ¿Y este comedor de qué año será? Yo no sé si este será tan antiguo como parece. Buenos días. Buenos, Buenos días. días. Estábamos preguntando por el juego de comedor. Es un juego neoclásico inglés, de doble bocha lustrada. Ha sido restaurado y está en 6.500 dólares. ¿El precio es negociable? ¿Pagando en efectivo? No. ¿Y estas orquídeas se venden juntas o separadas? Las plantas no se venden. Si quiere, le regalo una. No, no, no. Eh, preguntaba nomás. Gracias. and I'm here with Marcelo Martinesi talking to him about his new film Las Herreras. Hi, welcome to the Bellinale. Thank you very much. It's very nice to talk to you today. Um, I wanted to ask, first of all, your cinema focuses a lot on the um, experiences and rights of people from your country, so Paraguay. What does it mean to have your work and Paraguayan cinema put on a platform like the Bellinale competition section? Um, well, of course, we do human scale cinema. Very, I mean, location is was near my house. The maid that is in the film is my neighbor. So this is very, very small. <laughs> in, a, yeah. in a way, we work, even though we have a very decent budget in order to work well, yeah. we use the budget to be able to work 40 days instead of 30. But we are all a very uh, group of people that have been working, most of us together for a long time. So it was really interesting for me to see how um, it was going to be received in a huge festival like Berlinale. I've been here before and I know competition is always mainly big films. Yeah. And I think it has been wonderful how we feel here and the, the exposition, the visibility that the work has is great, I think, because the, the, at the end of the day, we do the cinema we believe in and we approach the subjects we believe in and the, the subjects that we want to talk about with our society and may, many times with ourselves. So yeah. I think it, it is great to have this platform. And um, the film focuses um, on the lives of this middle-aged lesbian couple. Um, it's quite rare for a film to be devoted purely to female experience and female characters, let alone lesbian women in their 50s or 60s. Why did you particularly want to tell this story? Um, well, I grew up in a very repressed society and I grew up surrounded by women, you know? Many times uh, aunties, mother, grandmother, friends of them. Uh, and during tea time, when I went with my mom to the hairdresser, I always heard these conversations, these dialogues. And many times I said, when I make a film, I want to, I want to write about these voices I've always mm -hmm. heard. But at the same time, when I was developing this story, I never saw it even as a possibility to have a man as a lead character. And we almost and don't many, see the men, you know, uh, they're kind yeah, of... Yeah, and it has to do with probably my own experience in Paraguay, that women are kind of grew, uh, are raised to know all the answers, you know. Since you're a boy, even with your sister, you have to be the one that knows, you know. You have to be the one that dries first, even though your sisters are older. You have to be the one that takes care of everything. And I hate that role mm -hmm. of not being able to ask questions. And I think the beautiful, the beautiful thing of these women are that they allow us to interrogate our society. And I said, if I can't want to interrogate my society, the best way of doing it will be through women. I admire the cinema of Fassbinder, the cinema of Todd Haynes, of Cassavetes, a female character. So I always said, this is the, the, the especially for a first film, I said, this is for me the safe environment. Mm. And we don't actually see much evidence of homophobia um, against Chela and Chiquita in their own sort of circle. 
I wondered, is that because of the privilege of their class and, and the world that they're living in, and, and would it be a very different kind of story for some of the women in the prison, for example? Uh, well, I think there are many things in their story. One of them is that for me, when they talk to each other, they talk about, they refer to another girl, or the one that looks like a boy, for example, when they go in the car. All this homophobia inside the lesbian world, I'm also very interested, yeah. the way that they cannot cope with diversity, even though they belong to a world of diversity yeah. themselves compared to the society they live in. And I think, of course, there is some kind of forgiveness when you belong to a ruling class. But at the same time, I think the prison they live in has to do in many ways with the fact that they are a lesbian couple, but also with the fact that they are from a ruling class, that they didn't have many chances of go to any other place to find a partner. So we find them in the film in a moment where they are probably tired of each other, tired of loving, tired of being with each other. There is no much probably a touch and love between them, passion, passionate mm. love. But there is this inertia, you know, this thing that they are together and there is probably nothing else that could happen until all of a sudden this breaks and they start to blossom somewhere yeah. else. And generally, what's the situation for LGBT people in Paraguay? It's quite complicated. It's... I mean, we, had, uh, we have uh, huge, uh, very important organizations. Aireana is the lesbian organization that helped us mm -hmm. a lot in organizing the party, the karaoke scene. Uh, we work with them. And there is also some other organizations that are really working for LGBT rights. But at the same time, there is a huge fundamentalism uh, promoted by the strong presence of the Catholic Church in the country. So, of course, you will see many, <clears throat> many times horrible movements from like, they, they seem like from 500 years ago saying we want mother and father or the, the, the head of the country, the president, that said that he will shoot himself in the balls if his son is gay. So you have to know that okay. this, is, uh, this comes from a society where we, you have all this uh, crazy difference. Yeah. And uh, within the film, <coughs> the, sorry. Sorry, and the driving and the car have um, a very prominent practical role in that it's how Chela goes and meets Angie and mm -hmm. sort of expands beyond her little world. But I wondered if that also had a metaphorical aspect to it. So it, in English, we have like the phrase driving in the slow lane and sort of living life in the slow lane. Um, and I wondered, is, is that sort of a metaphor for what Chela was doing? Um, yeah, yesterday one Belgium or French journalist told me that they also have in France something, my car, my liberty. And I think it came up naturally in the story uh, for me to have her, this is a woman who never worked, so of course she didn't know how to make any money. And all of a sudden this comes, and to make some little uh, petty cash at least, it was important for her to do this. And also the experience of driving and of, uh, of being alone makes her more confident of the fact that she can also drive her life. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was always a key uh, premise of the film. Uh, even five years ago when I started writing and explaining the film, this was very important for me. And of course, it can work as a metaphor or it can work as a character that does their only way out of uh, her own world. And, and that also made it easier for me to tell the story of these two prisons, you know? The prison of her house, where she's kind of trying to come out, and the real prison, where you see a lot more liberty, uh, patio, freedom, air, fresh air, uh, and yeah. happy people than outside. So also this question about what is really liberty, you know, what is freedom? Yeah, that's really interesting. And also there's this image of, the furniture, this antique furniture being changed and replaced with kind of cheap, newer stuff. Is that symbolic of um, Chela and Chiquita's relationship? Is it kind of out with the old and in with the new? Or is there still hope towards the end of the film that, that um, their relationship can go further? I think uh, in many ways, uh, when I was writing the story, I felt the urge to talk about time. And I think all this wallpaper, this furniture, everything, uh, helped us to portray that this is a story, a worn out story, yeah. as well as the relationship between them. And of course, the, the fact that we were with actresses of that age, almost without makeup, which I really like the fact yeah. that they dare to work with them because they are very, as you could see in the red carpet, 
they're so elegant and glamorous and then ask them, we're gonna make a film and you're gonna see anything in your body, any fat, we're gonna see your face without makeup, all that help us to portray time. Yeah. And I think you can take it in allegorical in many, in many ways, but I wanted it to work as a normal, uh, intimate story of people who is going through a process of decay. Yeah. And through that process of decay, they also, especially the Chela character, the main character, finds out that she in many ways has been living in a prison and that she can, even though uh, she is in her 60s, she can discover new things. So that's why when I pitched it, pitched it sometimes I pitched it as a coming of the age story of a 60 year old woman. Yeah, but we never actually see her, we sort of see the sexual tensions, but it never actually materializes. Mm -hmm. Why did you make that decision not to actually? And I was left? wondering in many ways how the, for example, the uh, LGBT um, community will take a film like this. For me, it was the only way of telling the story because I come from a very conservative society where pudor is a key to everything that happened mm -hmm. and where everything I felt that if I wanted to ta talk about this society, I, I exactly needed to do that. I needed to suggest without showing in order to make what we don't show, in, mo in order to make the invisible stronger. Yeah. Because it's all this discussion, you know, every time I went to discuss the script, especially men would say, oh, she'll have sex with Angie yeah. and she'll go mental and it will be, and I've seen many films like that and I wasn't interested in that. Yeah. I said, why don't we keep it like I feel that this society that doesn't have the courage? Because I feel that's my, in a way, if there is something metaphorical in the film for me, is the fact that it's this, this society that always repeats itself without having the courage to burst out. So. Mm. Yeah, because she's so close, you know, when mm -hmm. she stood behind the toilet door and uh -huh. she's kind of, you can feel the tension so much there, but it just never quite materializes. Um, just a general question on um, queer films. So you're nominated for um, the Teddy Award. Uh -huh. Why do you think it's necessary to create a space specifically for queer cinema at a film festival like the Berlinale? And I think giving the visibility to queer issues is very important in the world today as it is important for many human rights issues. We live in a world that is building walls again instead of understanding that we need to create a dialogue. And I feel that uh, many of the films that you see help you to rethink many things. I mean, I remember as a child many films have a huge impact on the way I saw many issues. And I feel that as an admirer of queer cinema like I mean, American independent, European, German history of queer cinema. I feel it's wonderful that this festival it was also a pioneer. I mean, now there are many other festivals that are giving some importance to other ways of looking at cinema uh, through behavior, culture, sexuality, etc. So I think it is, a, I really think it's, uh, it's key and I think it's really interesting to give a platform not only to show the film but also to discuss them and to understand that we live in a diverse society and that makes us more rich. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us today and Thank you very enjoy much. the rest of the Valinala. Thank you very much.